Hey everyone and welcome to your week one mindset video. Um, the topic of this week is going to be eating out. I'm going to go over some tips that have worked for me in the past. Um, all these are things that I have learned from trial and error and ways that I've been able to help others um, with you know some tips with eating out. We all love to go out and socialize and have a good time but when you're trying to lose weight and you're trying to eat healthy Sometimes it can be very frustrating or just downright embarrassing, depending on the friends you're with. So I want to set you up so that you don't go through any of those um, those types of things whenever you're you're headed out with friends, family, or your significant other. Um, ways of getting out and socializing make it about the, make it about the people you're with. Enjoy talking with them. You don't have to constantly be stuffing your face to have a good time. But it can be hard to eat out and eat healthy. So tip number one is going to be to pre-plan. Now, whenever you go out to eat, some of the best tips that I have found is one, going online. Um, you can go online on your computer. You can go online on your phone and check out the menu before you go. A lot of times restaurants will give you the calorie content, what's in the, um, the food that they prepare. You can really study beforehand to see keywords and elements like grilled, um, stay away from sautéed. And that way you can know what you're going to eat and have, um, you have a good feeling and knowing that you'll be prepared and not have to sit and flip through the menu and be the last to order and worry about everything that you're going to put into your mouth. So you'll have a way of um, knowing beforehand and a lot of times too they'll tell you online the calorie content you'll be amazed at some of the food you've been eating that you think is healthy but because of the sauces or the way they cook it it may not be so that you can tweak it and follow a healthy eating follow your healthy eating habits while you're away from home um, my fitness pal is a great app on the phone or you can go to myfitnesspal.com and it'll actually let you put in the restaurant and you can um, see exactly how much fat content, calories, and whatnot is in your food. Second tip I think that is a great tip. Be the first to order. Um, when you're out with friends, you know what you're going to be eating because you've already looked at the menu online. You can fake it and browse through the menu, find your menu item, and be the first to order. That way you're not tempted by what others are ordering. Uh, if they're ordering pizza or, you know, the cheese fries. And, hey, you may make them make a better decision just by what you're ordering. Um, I found that whenever I'm the first to order, that it kind of takes that pressure off of ordering. And, you know, oh, everybody else is eating that. And I'm going to feel really, you know, it's going to be sad when I order my grilled chicken salad. But there's a lot of menu items out there. And sometimes, too, if you pick the restaurant um, that you're going to, then you know you know what you can have at certain places. And sometimes it makes it a little bit easier than going to, you know, the bar down the street that has your favorite wings. Um, but definitely want to pre-plan, and you definitely want to be the first to order. Number three, have it your way. <laughs> Don't be afraid to ask the server to make things different. Um, I've worked in restaurants uh, throughout high school and college, and servers are really, um, I think, more now than whenever I did it because of allergies. But saying you're sensitive to something can give them kind of a key point to, oh, she may have an allergy to this, so I'm going to take this really serious. You don't have to tell the server you're on a diet. And you don't have to tell the server, you know, exactly what you're doing, but saying you are sensitive to, um, you know, butter or sensitive to, you know, frying oils or things like that, that kind of uh, gives you more of a, an ease to talk into how you want your food prepared. Certain things that you already know by doing your homework, um, by reviewing the menu, look for key words. You know, they'll say things in a menu that'll make your mouth water. So you want to make sure that the chicken you're ordering is grilled or baked without oils, that the vegetables that you're eating um, are not, you know, loaded with butter. There's a lot of time, restaurants hide a lot of things. They soak their chicken breasts in 
salt water to keep it, you know, moist. There's a lot of tricks to eating out that restaurants do all the time that you may um, not know. So those are all things that go in with that pre-planning so you can know those keywords um, and descriptions that they use in menus so that you can ask ahead of time. Um, number five, stay away from pre-meal snacking. So let's say you go to a Mexican restaurant. It's the first thing they do, set down a bowl of chips with salsa. If I'm with my husband, sometimes he'll eat the chips, but a lot of times we just ask for no chips. Um, it's an easy way to just mindlessly snack. So you're talking, you're chatting, you're taking in calories that you're not even aware of. And what we're doing here is eating healthy, and we want to be able to nourish our body with healthy foods. Um, so no mindless snacking. So say you're at an Italian restaurant and they bring that bread basket. Now, it's very hard to say no to the bread basket, but if, it's your, if you're with friends and you have the chips or the bread, just make it a part of your mindset before you go that you're not going to snack on those things before you have your meal. Um, a lot of times, too, restaurants will give peanuts. So all those things are just something that you need to learn to say no to and stay away from. Um, you want to eat food that fuels your body. So just keep that in mind that you're going to be having a meal and that you don't need those pre-meal snacks. Um, tip: The next tip would be to be salad savvy. Uh, salads can be loaded with extra calories, um, especially if you're from Pittsburgh, because anytime you order a chicken or steak salad, it comes with what? A load of fries on top of the salad. Whoever thought of this, <laughs> I will say that uh, in the past I have enjoyed many Pittsburgh steak salads, but you want to say no fries. So this also goes with pre-planning and looking at the menu. That way you'll know exactly what is going to be put on the salad or don't be shy and ask. Um, does that salad come with cheese? Is the dressing on the side? Dressing on the side is a big thing. You want to stay away from any creamy dressings. I don't care if they're fat-free, low-fat. Try to stay away from creamy dressings. Fat-free dressings are actually loaded with tons of sugar and artificial ingredients that your body doesn't know what to do with. So what does it do? It turns it into fat. Um, always ask for a vinaigrette or oil and vinegar. Um, and always ask for it on the side. That way you control how many calories you take in by that salad dressing. Um, you definitely want to ask for cheese on the side. If you want to have a little bit of cheese, that's fine on your salad. But those are just key tips to ask for um, ahead of time so that you're not bombarded when you get your salad. Definitely no croutons, no bacon bits, no... Um, there's, there's tons of things that they put on the salads. But one great thing that you can ask the server is, can you add extra vegetables? So I want my dressing on the side. Is my chicken or fish grilled? Um, is there, if it's baked, is there anything added on top of it? Or is it cooked in cooking spray? Um, and, you know, salad dressing on the side, baked fish, grilled fish or chicken. Um, cheese on the side, no croutons, extra veggies, and boom. Eventually, it'll start to get easier, and it'll just come out of your mouth. Not saying that when you go out to eat, the only thing you can eat is a salad, because as long as you're pre-planning, you may find something else on the menu that is suit, um, suitable for your diet. Um, and definitely no breadstick with the salad. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, uh, a definite no, because they're loaded with butter, garlicky butter. Um, but those are easy things that you'll just get into habit of saying no to. And when you leave the restaurant, you'll feel better because of it. So this is the big one. Alcohol. I love it. You love it. Let's face it. We all enjoy having a drink now and then. And I always get asked this. Um, I can't do that because I don't want to eliminate my alcohol. I'm not saying that you can't have alcohol. But just be mindful that beer, wine, and liquor are all calories. So you're intaking more calories than you normally would. Um, maybe limit your alcohol to a special occasion or if you're really watching, you know, a special occasion. If you're a person that comes home 
cooks dinner with a glass of wine, maybe limit your alcohol intake to the weekend. But one tip I want to give you is every time you have an alcoholic beverage, make it a point to have a glass of water. So if I have a glass of wine, I have a glass of water. And I have to finish that water before I have another glass of wine. Because a lot of times you're drinking the alcohol because you're thirsty. So by doing that one for one, um, you'll eliminate some of the calories that you would be getting from the alcohol. Plus, when you drink, you're more likely to let your guard down and snack on things that you wouldn't or, you know, maybe order, order a dessert. So it's just a little tip and, you know, it's things that baby steps. So things over time, I'm not saying to eliminate alcohol completely, especially, you know, during the holidays and whatnot, but just try to do one alcohol, one water, and try to, you know, limit yourself to the weekends. The last tip that I'm going to go over with you is portion control. So restaurants have a way of giving us so much more than we need to eat um, in a meal. The plates are larger. The portions are bigger. Um, so ask for a box. You can box your food up and take it home and eat it for lunch the next day. So say you ordered, you know, a chicken breast dinner and it comes with two chicken breasts. You're going to box one of those and, um, you know, you load it up on your vegetables and maybe you've got a sweet potato. So you want to box half of that and take it home. Now you can eat your vegetables and your sweet potato, but you want to limit your portions. Um, and, and a lot of times restaurants give us way much more than, than we need to eat in one portion. Or say if you're with your significant other, you could split a meal. Um, and that's definitely a good way to save your calories plus save, you know, your money. So portion control and I am cooking right now. <laughs> So take it slow, enjoy your food, enjoy your conversation, enjoy your friends and family, and don't put eating out, uh, don't put the focus on the food when eating out. Stick to a palm size of protein, um, two handfuls, two handfuls to get two hands together for your vegetables, and one handful of starchy carbs. So you can ask, instead of a baked potato, can I have a sweet potato? Butter, sour cream, all that on the side. Um, definitely want to watch the sour cream. So eliminate that altogether. And, you know, a big tip for having a baked potato if they don't have sweet potatoes. I love salsa on a baked potato. Um, but you'll get the hang of it. And as we go through the, um, the training with the group, we'll talk more about what you can and can't eat, and knowing your boundaries and your portion sizes. Um, and I hope that we can go to a restaurant and feel more comfortable um, and not feel so worried that we're going to be judged or that we can't have a good time because we are trying to eat healthy. Have a wonderful week, and I will be posting every day, so I will see you in the group, and you hold the power to change. See you, in, see you this week. Have a great week, challengers.